Greetings, it's Brandon and I'm back. And I was watching this uh, live stream <clears throat> of Max Bauer and Robert Breaker and Brett. Just having it play in the background. Just for something to listen to. And as I'm listening, I hear Robert Breaker use a scripture that I've never really heard of before. Um, I mean, I've read through the Bible, but it's just it's not one that stuck out to me. And he used it in a way that I didn't think was accurate, so I looked up some commentaries, and it's not. So I just want to share that with you, and let's look at the true context of Isaiah chapter 5, verse 8. Sorry, I feel like I'm going to sneeze, but let's play uh, this clip. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. The Lord scattered them abroad from the face, from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore, the name of it is called Babel. Why? Because they sounded like they were babbling. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So, what does man try to do? When man gets together, what do they do? They kick God out. So it almost sounds like God doesn't want man to get together. They live better when they're out kind of in the country on their own, apart from everyone. When they all start getting together, that's when the messes start. Uh, you go to any big city like New York or Paris or something. It, Detroit. It, or Detroit. <laughs> there's crime everywhere. The Bible says, woe unto them that build house in the house. It's not a good thing to be able to see your neighbors. Uh, fence, fence posts make good neighbors. It, there's, enough, there's enough land in the world to where everybody a lot... Okay, so he uses a verse that says, woe unto, woe unto those that build house to house. And he says, it's not good to see your neighbor. So basically he's saying it's bad thing. He's saying that the Bible's condemning living in a city. Okay, that's basically what he's saying. And I'll listen to a little bit more, but that's that's that verse, Isaiah 5, 8, where it says, woe unto those who... Uh, we'll, we'll look at it, but... He's saying that it's condemning people that live in a city, basically. Life today could have 100 acres, probably 1,000 acres. Uh, someone said you could take the entire population. And by the way, this sounds like more legalism. And put them within the city limits of Jacksonville, like, Florida. And they're all standing up next to each other. And the whole world would fit within the city limits. That's a really big city. No, so there's, kind of yeah. So there's plenty of room in the world for people. Why is it they seem to always want to live right next to each other, or right on top of each other? Literally. Oh, like, Shut up up there, you know. <laughs> it's urban. Sp uh, anyways, um, so look at the verse here on the e-sword. This is a part of Isaiah chapter 5 here, which the e-sword says is, Woe to the wicked. It starts off with verse 8. It says, Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no place, that they may be replaced alone in the midst of the earth. And so, Robert Breaker tries to say that this is talking about people getting together, living in cities. And that, you know, God's condemning that, basically. Um, so we look at the verse, and we look at one of the Albert Barnes, which I love a lot of his commentary, because he goes into detail. So we look at the part that says, Join house to house that seek to possess many houses, or perhaps that seek to live in a large and magnificent palaces. Okay. A similar denunciation of this sin is recorded in Micah 2.2 2 and 5. And am I kind of interested? So let's just do that. This wasn't planned, but it's going to be probably some sort of short video anyway. So Micah... Two, two. And they covet fields and take them by violence. Interesting, uh, they take them by violence. Never mind. I mean, <laughs> they covet the fields and the houses and take them away. So they oppress man and take his house. Even a man and his heritage. Let's look at Nehemiah. Chapter 5, verse 1 through 8. So it's about covetousness, okay? That's what it's about. It's not about people living in cities. Do you get what I'm saying? Do you see the difference between the actual context and what Robert's... Nehemiah 1 through 8. And there was a great cry of the people and, and of their wives against their brethren, the Jews. 
For there were that said, We are sons and our daughters are many, therefore we take up corn from them that we may eat and live. Some also there were that said, We have mortgaged our lands, vineyards, and houses that we might buy corn because of the earth. There were also that said, We have borrowed money from the king's tribute, and that upon our lands and vineyards. Hmm. I don't know, that one's a little bit more to think about there, this whole passage. So, uh, people that sold their lands to get food, mortgaged them. But then there were people that kept their land in the vineyards and they borrowed more money. So is that the people that are covetousness, maybe? Anyways, it, it's about covetousness, and you know, again, I gotta scroll down a little bit. Here's Kaufman's commentaries on the Bible. What's it say? Woe to the greedy and the selfish. Does it say woe to those who live in cities? No, it does not. That's completely not the context of the verse. So, maybe study things out a little bit more. Think about what you're saying. Thank you. God bless.